Hi there traders and welcome to Trade the Structure. So the CPI number came out last night. It was a lot stronger than expected. Markets dumped coming into the open US session and then they turned around and reversed all those losses and just ramped straight back up. So I think it was about a 1500 point rally off the low on the Dow. So now that's phenomenal. Okay, so I think it's about time we actually sit back and talk about is this market going to bounce? Now, many people are talking um, the market's seen a bottom, uh, inflation's you know, it's seen a peak, it's, it's seen its highs. Now, I, I think there's, there's an equal and potentially stronger argument for the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just go through the key charts where I see the main daily charts. Okay, we're not going to worry about the intraday action because you know, funds and the major money will be moving around according to the daily basis. They're not gonna be moving around intraday. That's too much money coming in and out of the market, too fast a time frame from them. So the markets are controlled on the daily and the weekly. So we're gonna stick with those views, go through the main indices. We're gonna go through, you know, Asian markets, US markets, and we're gonna go through some European charts as well and just see where the markets are at. You know, can we expect, this is the lows. Can we expect a major bounce? Now I think it's it's, not unreasonable to think we're going to get a good bounce considering the amount of shorts that are loaded up in the downside that could easily be the fuel to move um, straight up again which i suspect was the bulk of the move from last night it was more of just a major short squeeze i don't think it was a repositioning of anything no one really had a chance to reposition to be quite honest um, on the open because it was all one-way direction you know straight up from the open on the us market and that was after that major sell-off so you know to think that we've got a new low put in place I think that could be a bit unreasonable. I think if we, you know, if we do know there's going to be a low put in place, we need to see it retested, okay? But we'll talk about all this in the technical view. So stick around and we'll get straight into it. Okay, we're going to start off with the US markets. Of course, we're going to start off with the Dow, then we'll go over to the US Tech 100 or the NASDAQ. All right, so my basic idea or premise um, around what's going on is obviously we know US dollar is the main thing everyone's watching at the moment and US inflation. Also the flip side of that, so there's a, you know, there's sort of two, I guess, schools of thought. You've got inflation's going higher, the cost of debts are going higher. Inflation is just not under control at the moment. Um, you could say that it potentially peaked, but I don't believe it has until we start to see something come down. Now they did have a reading come out at 0.3 on core inflate or core CPI recently, then it's gone bang, straight back up to 0.6. So year on year inflation is basically hovering at those highs. So it's not coming down. Look, maybe it's not going up, but you can't say it's peaked until we start to come down. If it sticks around these levels and they're not getting it under control with a rate rise, they have to start going harder and faster. And not only that, they have to go higher with rate rises than what's originally anticipated. Okay, so they might be thinking they're going to four, five, six percent. Now they might be think, thinking six, seven, eight percent. You know, on um, uh, the Fed Reserve. Um, I'm not sure of the exact figures, but you get what I'm saying is that you know we we thought it was going to be so you know, three percent rate rise. Um, over a period of time. Now they're looking at potentially four or five percent rate rises, you know, in, in certain blocks. All right? And the Fed's going to be have to be more aggressive. If they can't get inflation down, they've got to be more aggressive. Okay. And that's the short and curly of it. So what does that mean? That means the higher cost of debt. So you've got companies have had a really low inflation um, environment and a really low interest rate environment for such a long time. They've been financing at really low cost, okay? Now that cost is going up and it's going up quite fast. So that's gonna really crimp, um, you would expect crimp the stock market. And that's why we've seen the market slowly going down. But the flip side of that is everyone's looking at, uh, okay, if the economy slows with a high interest rate environment, that's a big problem, all right? But at the moment, inflation is still quite high. They're basically at full unemployment and unemployment is not, you know, is not increasing. It's actually quite low and it's staying quite low. So there's that group of thought where, okay, the economy is still quite strong. We could absorb these interest rate rises. Yeah, no, it's it's hard to see what's happening. I think what we're doing at the moment is just we're gradually going down in the US, okay? It's not just a spike like we saw in the pandemic, uh, the start of the pandemic, a big sell-off all in one hit. It's been a gradual process, you know, and that's because of those two group of thoughts, I, I believe anyway. So what am I looking at? What you're looking at and what I would expect is that you know, the old saying that the, the biggest, some of the biggest rallies occur in a bear market. Okay, and that's what we're seeing. We saw that 1500 point from low to high on the Dow last night. Okay, it's just, it kicked off really strong. That's gonna happen when the market starts to get a bit overbought. And you can do that because the moves are quite bigger. So you can start to look to buy on those extensions on the way down, try to pick a bottom, you know, buy for shorter time frame charts. You might be looking at intraday on a 30 or hourly chart or whatever it is. Start to find a base, you get these numbers. You know, CPI come out, stronger than expected, but all of a sudden the market, you know, it did sell off straight after the number, uh, the release, which was an hour prior to the US open. And then the market's turned around and on a V shape has gone straight back up again. So that's all your elbows working into it, you know, your bargain hunters, but what it's done, it could trigger a bit of a, a bit of a bounce in the share markets. Okay, I don't disregard that at all. 
I think we could be seeing a bit of a bounce um, going forward, but I think it's a bounce in the bear market, okay? And we've seen this time and time again, the market's bounced. Uh, you can see that on the Dow here, you've got this little support here, then we started a big bounce all the way back up and everyone was saying, that's it, it's over, we've seen a bottom, bang, we've made a new bottom. Okay, so we can't, we can't discount this as being, we're just getting a bounce. Until we start to break up well and truly, you got to start to test right up to 34,099. So this kind of a level here on the Dow. So at the moment, you still can see, you know, it's quite clear. It's very clear that the market's in a downtrend. Okay, you've got a good push down, good retracement, good push down, good retracement. So we're making lower highs and lower lows. That's the Dow theory. The Dow theory says, you know, we're going in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. And that's what we've got at the moment until we start to break up at a clear level. And I think at the moment, it's this 34.090 level. Now, if we start to see something like this, which I sort of anticipate we're going to get a bounce, you know, big move up like that, and then we start to see a push down, and then we start to hold at a higher level. I think that's going to be a better sign that maybe this low is in place, but at the moment, we're far from it. I mean, okay, the trend is still down. We're just basically bouncing. Now, when the market's found the base, you don't see a V-shaped recovery, okay? Like potentially what we just saw um, last night, that, that push down, that flush down. Coming to support, fair enough. It's a minor double bottom, but it's only a minor double bottom. Okay, double bottoms are completely different where you've got to think that it's a big change in trend. At the moment, it's just found a double bottom in a downtrend. Okay, that's gonna drag in some buyers, gonna trigger some buyers. And not only that, it's gonna trigger a massive short squeeze, which I think um, it was more to the point of what we saw last night. This spike down is just, um, it dragged in some more sellers on the CPI number. And all of a sudden, the, um, the market's been waiting and waiting, so it's been selling off into that, that CPI number release, um, which was last night in this, the beginning of the US session. The market's been prepping for it. It's been coming down and down. The news sources are saying everyone's worried because it could be higher inflation than we think, more rate rises than we think. As soon as we get that exact number, the market's starting to go up. And now they're saying, oh, we're happy with rate rises. Now the market's not. It could just be a pure and simple, a big short squeeze, okay? And if that's the case, then we're gonna get another lower high, like something like this and like this, and we're gonna take out, we're gonna make new lows through 28,640, okay? It's very, it's very early, and don't forget, we got, we're dealing with the daily charts. It's such a broad kind of a, um, a range as we're seeing at the moment. So we're seeing these broad swings. We're seeing a big move up, and that's taken out a little minor level there. And then we've got a major lower high coming to play. We've got another leg down. Maybe that leg down is exhausted, so we have to get a bit of a pullback. And this, this thing is, we've seen a thousand point rally or close to a thousand point rally on the Dow, and everyone's saying, um, yeah, the, the low's in. Now, the same people said the low's in here, the low's in here. You know, they said the low's in quite a few times now. So as soon as you see that getting spruiked online, I'm always concerned that it's not in place, okay? You wanna see at least a major, you know, a quite a clear on the daily base, a higher level, uh, higher low start to build before you can start to say, maybe we are gonna attack the highs, you know, the all-time highs, and maybe we are, we have seen the lows put in place. You know, I'm not willing to gamble that this is the low because it's technically, it's nothing. It's just a minor double bottom in a downtrend. And that can happen, you can get a bit of a flush high, so we can do this. You know, we could press up and then start to press down from that level. There's nothing to say, you know, we can't do that. We haven't shown evidence that the market's going to start to ramp up. All right. So that's that's the Dow. Let's go over to the US Tech 100 now. Okay. Looking at the um, the Tech 100, you can see, look, with respect to momentum, momentum is sort of on the overextended uh, side of the, of the coin. Um, so you could expect that potentially momentum starting to fade on the downside and we're getting a bit of a corrective move out. Now, again, on the daily charts, it hasn't confirmed anything. You've got levels kind of in around here, which is holding the trend down. And that's around uh, 11,655, say, okay? So 11,655, the trend is still down until that level's broken. Now we could go up another 100, 200 points. Yeah, where are we from here? Let's just take a bit of a look. If we go from roughly up here and we do test into there and hold, that is still a 530 point rally. So that's quite a lot. That's you know a fair few percent on the NASDAQ. And we could still be holding this trend down. And not only the daily trend down, but the leg, you know, the trend down on this leg alone. We're just gonna bear that in mind. You know, you get these, these big bounces, what they do, drag in some buyers that are picking the bottom and then they turn around and squeeze them back out again. The market does it time and time and time again. Okay, so we really have to be on, on guard that we could easily roll over. We could do something like this, like I just mentioned. Right, let me just make that a bit clearer. We could do something like that. We could hold that anchor to the downtrend. Nothing changes. We've just had a minor pullback in a daily downtrend. So you're gonna get bigger moves uh, and then continue our way down. Or we could start to get, you know, break of that anchor. Then we start to get a bit of a move up and then we start to fade at a, at a lower high again on a daily basis and at a major lower high at the moment. This is the anchor to the downtrend. We could have that sort of flushes down. We have come into a support area where you do expect some buying, okay? 
Um, the market comes into a level where it picks that it is going to see some buying and you do get that reaction up. Is that reaction up enough to see a break of the anchor to this downtrend or are we going to just fade? Okay, and go straight back down again. Again, that comes down to where are you positioned? Are you positioned um, on, on the side of the fence where in high inflation levels and they're not getting inflation under control means higher debt levels, means if a company is paying more money out to debt than what they anticipate, there's less money to go to growth. Now, we're trying to factor that in at the moment and nothing has said that inflation has peaked at the moment. Okay, so maybe they raise rates Inflation keeps going sideways. They raise rates again. They keep going sideways. They haven't got it under control. So then all of a sudden you're thinking, we're going to be only raised 3%. So it's a start to finish. Now we're going to raise 4%. Oh, now we'll have to raise 5%. So you, you've got to understand that nothing is really changed at the moment until inflation starts to come down. They start to get under control. Then we can potentially start to looking for a base, in my opinion anyway. Again, I think like the Dow, we're starting to see a bit of a bounce. Maybe it's the start of a bounce, but again, it's just a little bit too early. Everything's saying, you know, we're down on support level here. Momentum's starting to ease potentially here. You know, one night doesn't change anything, okay? You get a couple of nights, we get a couple of bounce, we might get a minor pullback, and then we get another bounce. That's what you'd be looking for on a, on a real short-term basis, meaning we might get this kind of thing, and then we might get something like this at a higher level, and then we could start to maybe, you know, jump in here on the long side, expecting a retracement of this leg here. Then we've got to be on guard. Are we going to fail at 12,995? or are we gonna fail a little bit lower, or are we gonna go straight up and through, okay? Let's go across to the Asian markets now. Okay, we'll start off with the ASX 200. You can see, to me, that's actually looking a lot better than what we're seeing in the US market. We've already bounced. We've got this, you know, not I wouldn't say it's not a double bottom either. I mean, a double bottom where it is, it is a bottom means you've taken out the most recent anchor. Now, for me, that anchor is somewhere around here to the downtrend. You've got a leg down, leg down. Now we've grinded up, we've come straight back down again. You could probably even drop that a little bit lower. You say at this level here, it's 71.26. Now that is the anchor to the downtrend. We could fluff around here as much as we want. If we don't break that anchor, then the trend is still down in my book. Now we could easily, um, like I said, we could jump up here and all of a sudden we've got this high low in place and people are expecting we're gonna bounce. We could retest that and then fail miserably. Okay, we just don't know at the moment. So it's way too early to think the bottom's in place until we get some sort of confirmation. And confirmation would be, I mean, I know this is very, very broad, but confirmation is when we break that anchor. We might have a bit of a trend down and then we start to build some sort of key high or low. And if we build that after breaking this anchor to the downtrend, then you could start to think, maybe we're gonna start targeting all-time highs at 76.28 up here, okay? But for now, it's just a bounce, all right? So that's what I'm just looking at at the moment. Momentum is in a you know it's in a prime position. I think we're looking a lot better than say the Dow, you know, US markets, other Asian markets, especially the, the Hang Seng when we look at that and DAX. Okay, so let's get on to the next one now. All right, we're looking at the Hang Seng at the moment. All right, that is been under pressure for a long time now, and this low at seventeen eight twenty is lows from say eleven years ago on a daily basis, and we've just broken through that now. When you look at it on a daily perspective, is that a flush or are we going to sort of bounce back? You know. Are we going to flush like that and then we start to get a bounce back up above that level, consolidate a bit and start to take off? If we can bounce back above that level and sort of one foul swoop from here, push back above, which would take probably a couple of good days, um, and then start to consolidate above that level at 17,820, then you can start to think that we're going to start to see higher prices and then I'll be more bullish on it. But there's nothing to say we can't push back into that level and start to fail below it and head to new lows. For now, the Hang Seng is in a definite downtrend. It's a clear downtrend. It's just a little extended, okay? So you're gonna get, when you get a bit extended, you're gonna get pullbacks. It, pullbacks doesn't mean anything if you're having breaking a key level, okay? It doesn't mean we've seen it, we found the low, doesn't mean we found the base, doesn't mean anything. We're still in a downtrend. We're just pulling back, okay? Until we, we could get a lower high, we could get that sort of scenario and then sell off again, even lower. Now let's look at the um, Nikkei. Okay, the Nikkei is here. You can see it on the screen. That's looking a bit better, obviously a lot better than the Hang Seng. It's a bit like the ASX 200. You see more, if you're looking at it on a broader sense, we see more of a range bound action between 28.595 and the support around 25.645. To me, that is a lot better if you start scrunching up and it's bouncing off this support at 24.340. So longer term, I mean, the Nikkei can start to do that, can start to push up to new highs, consolidate sideways for a long period of time. You've got this big flush here, which maybe you discount that, maybe you don't. Uh, technically, because that was a pandemic, we bounce down, straight back up, V-shaped recovery, consolidate before we take up and we push up through that 24,340. And now we, you know, we fail at these highs, we fail again, deeper pullback, retest it, we're pushing back up. 
This could easily be a high low, okay, 25.645, and we start to you know press away higher through this level, back up in the retest into all-time highs, and potentially break up into new all-time highs at 30.640. Okay, that is a possible scenario. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, you can see momentum, the MACD, I, I look for momentum, is in a good position. It's starting to show some characteristics where you would expect we're seeing a bit of a bounce, okay? So really, what I wanna see is price to get back above the EMAs, consolidate, on a minor scale, you know, on a daily basis even, and then start to head back up into that 28.595, and then you start to see, are we gonna see a reaction down off that level? Are we gonna range again? Or are we gonna break up and through, okay? And then you're looking at either that scenario there, or you're looking at something a bit more negative where you've gone through, pumped through, and then you've got a lower high come to play. Okay, so for now, yeah, everything's looking good for a bounce. Just gonna get up through this kind of inside level here at around, so was it 27.347? Okay, we get up above that and we start consolidate, hold it, then you're looking for an extension up to 28.595 and then potentially even higher. Okay, let's get over to European markets. Okay, we're looking at the DAX here, uh, the German 40 or the Germany 40. You can see that the pressure's definitely down. Nothing's changed at the moment. Yeah, we've got a good little rally last night. Markets basically across the board bounced. And, and when you're looking at everything in unison, you've seen all the, the share market uh, bounce and share market indices, the major ones, they all bounce pretty much the same. Okay, um, you've got crude oil did the same sort of reaction. The US dollar, um, your Bitcoin, your Ethereum. To me, it's just a massive squeeze of, you know, on the US dollar, everyone's biased long. You've got to squeeze down. On the indices, everyone's biased short. You've got a big squeeze back out. So it's like you're, everything across the market was just a bit of a reaction, okay? Once the US started to kick off, and it wasn't, you know, 30 minutes, an hour later, you've got crude going. Everything happened at the exact same time. Around 12.30, they opened the US market, US started kicking off, and everything, you know, reversed or squeezed in the opposite direction that it has been going in. Okay, so it's kind of a, it's kind of strange to be quite honest, but um, you, you think it's like a coordinated attack on the opposite side of the market. So if everyone's buying shorts, a coordinated attack on the upside, you need to squeeze the shorts out. Uh, on oil or the US dollar, on, on gold, everything reacted in the exact opposite direction. Okay, so it's it's interesting to say the least, but you know we're trading what we're seeing. And at the moment, the DAX is on a daily basis, it's still going down. Okay, we've come into this 12.535 level uh, as resistance. We've got to focus on that. If we start to break up and you can see the moves down, okay, this move down was quite, you know, on with regards to momentum, it was quite strong. Okay, the next move into that level, less less momentum. And then we've seen momentum start to ease. We have pushed through that level. So if we start to get a bit of a pullback and we consolidate sideways and then momentum starts to roll again, I would expect this to hold at 12.535. Okay, but if we start to break above it, then you might look at something like this. You start to get that kind of a, a scenario where we've flushed it, We've come back above that level, it's starting to hold again, and we start to get a rally, and we could potentially look to 14.910. Okay, so it's a decent rally on the cards, if that's what's gonna play out. If we don't, and we start to, you know, just consolidate around here, maybe chop around, then we start to see, um, you know, if that holds at 12.535, we're looking down to 11.405, and even a lot lower, okay? Time will tell what's gonna happen here, but either way, we're just bouncing at the moment. There's no reason to get too excited, because we're in a downtrend. Okay, we're looking at the UK 100 at the moment. That's looking a little bit better. You've got this major level at 76, 79. That's held quite a few times. We have got this sell off and then we've got this lower high and then we've got the sell off. So this uptrend to me is broken, right? And that's probably a bit of a key. We're either from there, you either expect sideways range bound action and potentially between 67, 88 or 76, 79, or you expect a bit of a bounce, another lower high to, to come into play. So you might get, there's nothing wrong to say, okay, we get something like this and we start heading south even more, okay? UK have got their own issues politically and economically. Um, I don't know the exact ins and outs of it, but they've got a few little issues they're dealing with. So I would expect the selling pressure to continue. If we do get a bit of a bounce, yeah, it could just be a pure reaction if we get you know, a major bounce in the US markets. It could be a pure reaction that we are gonna get a bit of a bounce and we start you know, react it back up. And then we start to you know, um, come off a, I guess, a key lower high, somewhere a lot higher. Okay, so that's the kind of scenarios that I'll be looking at. I wouldn't expect from here, we're gonna go straight up to new all-time highs. Okay, that's what the bull scenario, if anyone that is a pure bull and hates being on the downside, basically they're pure stock trader, then by nature, they're a bull. They will be looking for that break of 76, 79. They'll be arguing that for me. Technically, nothing on the, the UK 100 is expecting, I would expect that. If that kind of scenario, we get a move straight up and we start to do this, then 
that to me is just a technical phenomenon, if you can argue that. What I would expect, if you're gonna get, the market's gonna press the new highs through 76, 79, you've gotta at least retest it, sucker in some sellers, and then ramp up from there, okay? But for now, nothing to me is pointing towards that. It's pointing to more at the very best case scenario, we're gonna get a bit of a bounce between that range. Otherwise, we're gonna sell off. Okay, just to finish off, we'll look at uh, US dollar, which is a key to everything at the moment, and we'll just look at the US bond market. All right, we're gonna look at them both on the daily chart as well, just to get a bigger, you know, bigger timeline perspective. You can see on the screens, US dollar, that's still chugging its way higher. Okay, nothing's changed there. Um, just because we had a bit of a, you know, a bit of a bounce in US equities and a bit of a sell-off into the US dollar doesn't mean anything. It could be, you know, the late comers to the party who are buying, you know, your currency pairs or something, something US dollar related that are late to the party, they're probably going to be the first ones that get a bit of a shock. And if they see some, you know, there is the potential for a big bounce in the US equities, then yeah, they're probably going to take some risk off the table. Uh, but longer term, the, the market's still heading high. You can see it's holding higher levels, higher levels all the way up. Now it has just got this little lower high. Not nothing confirmed. It's only confirmed when it gets through that low. Okay, so really the market's still you know, pressing higher. That's the most recent, I guess, anchor to the uptrend. Uh, probably the anchor's down here more than likely. Um, but that's a, a level that could easily be tested and still hold up and then start to work its way up. Now I don't suspect that's going to change or the dynamics. It's not going to change at all until we get um, some interest rate rises that start to really pressure inflation. Okay, if in, if you're raising rates, raising rates, raising rates, but inflation continues to go sideways, I'm expecting the US dollar to continue chugging higher because if they can't get inflation under control, it means higher rate rises, uh, which means a higher US dollar basically. Okay, because you've got to remember the differential between US dollars and say Aussie dollar or whatever, someone that's not raising much, so the euro, that differential is going to get more in favor, obviously, of the US dollar. So more inclined, the big funds are going to flow out of Euro into US dollar or continue to flow that way. There's no reason to get out of that uh, and, and give up that interest rate differential. All right, so let's just look at, um, we've got bonds here. Now you've got bonds on a daily basis. This is a short term, the twos. They've been just pressing lower, lower, lower. And okay, that means yields are going higher, which means anticipating that they need a higher yield or higher interest rates to, to really start pressuring inflation down. Okay, so as long as they're cruising down, there's no reason to think that they're gonna get inflation under control anytime soon. The bond market's a pretty educated, um, you know, sort of a leading indicator, I guess. You look at the 10 years on the US, they're still, you know, at least holding lows. They did tick in the new lows, but still, you know, that downtrend is still well and truly in place. Nothing at all has changed. You go to the 30s, and again, much like the 10s, nothing's changed, okay? So it's that short term that we're more concerned with, the two years. Concerned with that because we don't know how much the US Fed's gonna raise rates by. And what is that going to do to inflation? Okay, they've raised rates. They were talking about that. That's good. We've got another 75 basis points coming. If that does nothing to it, the CPI numbers or inflationary numbers, then they're going to have to raise it a bit harder and a bit faster. Okay, so that's pretty much the general consensus at the moment. What that does to the share market is left to be unseen. Um, like I said, big rally last night. It caught a lot of people off guard. I think that's more due to a big short squeeze, you know, after the fact because we've got a long time until we get the next CPI numbers. So why not squeeze a few traders out and start heading south again? All right, so that's my view. Um, I don't think we're headed bottom at all. You know, in the markets, you know, we're going to start going from here to new all-time highs. I think that's a long way off. Okay, if that's ever going to happen, I think we could see more lows in time. Okay, we could get a bounce. I think that's more the likely scenario for me. We get a bit of a bounce in the markets, drag in some buys, turn around and squeeze them straight back out into the new lows. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. It'd be fantastic if you like what you hear. Take some time to give us a thumbs up. You know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It'd be much appreciated. Anyway, until next time, we'll speak to you soon.